I'm Tanya Diggory, founder and director of Karma. We're a mental health training organization empowering entrepreneurs, freelancers, and business teams to nurture good mental health and well-being. Karma is an award-winning mental health and well-being training organization. We empower entrepreneurs, freelancers, and business teams to nurture good mental health and well-being. We do this primarily through helping workplaces through mental health and well-being training courses and strategy development but we also support entrepreneurs freelancers the solo worker to look at how they can embed mental health and well-being practices in their daily life through events and webinar series as well so the heart of the business came from my own personal experience in the past of having been through extended periods of high stress, going into burnout, and then struggling with anxiety, particularly panic attacks on and off for about a year. And then from that experience and recovery, it really opened my eyes up to the importance of looking after your mental health and well-being, particularly in business where there's a lot of pressure and responsibility and a lot to navigate so you know if you're feeling well in yourself you're in a much better position to be at your best for your business for others around you so it creates a positive ripple effect so it's a selfless act to take time for yourself so that's what we do at karma we help people feel empowered to look after their mental health and well-being the concept of mental health is still fairly new but you know we have come a really really long way at the same time yet there's still a way to go there is a really strong business case for managing mental health in the workplace nowadays and actually just over the last year following the pandemic it was cited that around 15 million working days were lost due to stress depression and anxiety alone and um, it's costing organizations in the uk around 45 billion annually and um, so it's a very costly issue of people you know taking sick days off and having to leave work due to sickness having a high turnover of staff so there's a really strong business case there um i believe and what i'm seeing is that companies are starting to realize more and more the importance of you know looking after your mental health at work um, but also entrepreneurs as well um, have become increasingly burnt out trying to you know navigate and do so many things for their business and especially during uncertain times in our economy so at the same time um, the global wellness institute recently cited that the size of the global wellness market is now three times the size of the pharmaceutical industry which is incredible when you think about it like the size of the global wellness market and how many people are really you know engaging in that and looking at you know, taking care of their wellness in comparison to what the pharmaceutical industry takes in, you know, trillions of dollars per year. So there is that indication there that as much as there is a real need for looking after your mental health at work and that stress is now the leading cause of physical illness, like there is evidence to show that um, at the same time. Uh, you know, we know that people are becoming more switched on and more aware and have more access to wellness resources and information to empower them to look after themselves at work. So when it comes to COVID-19 and the impact on our mental health, I think there's no doubt about it that it has had a huge impact. Um, studies have even shown that around 60% of adults and 68% of younger people in the UK have struggled with their mental health, especially during lockdown. Um, and when you think about it from a sort of neuroscience perspective in terms of, you know, what feeds our happiness as human beings, um, what what's important to us, what's meaningful, a lot of our very basic human needs were either really stripped back or completely restricted or taken away. You know, there were people that lost their jobs completely, not just on furlough or, you know, having to work in a different way, um, but also just, you know, not being able to see people that are meaningful to us that we love, you know, not being able to hug and hold people that we love um, having variety in our lives, which is really important for well-being as well, and being able to do things that are important to us and having that stripped back. So when a lot of your basic human needs are stripped back, it can have a knock-on effect on how you feel in your wellness and in your mental health in general. Um, at the same time, on, a, on a, almost um, a flip side, it did enable us um, as human beings to take an opportunity to take stock. You know, we naturally were forced into a situation where the pace of life slowed down a lot more which in turn kind of gave us that opportunity to reflect and to take stock of what's most important. So for some people, they had these great realizations during lockdown and for others, they've gone through a lot of challenge and trauma even. It's just, everyone had such mixed experiences. But I think whatever your experience was, it needs to be taken into account moving forward. 
um, whether it's in your workplace or as individuals, that this hasn't been a normal year, a year and a half now, you know, and, and people also may have had their own issues or struggles before then. So, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic could have also exacerbated um, issues for some people. So it's worth bearing it in mind, understanding that for some, they may have found some revelation and, you know, reflection and awareness, a heightened sense of awareness as to what's meaningful. And they've been able to implement things that have been positive in their business. On the other hand, some people might have had the opposite experience. So I think it's a mixed bag um, of experiences, but we've all got to be really mindful of that for one another, especially when it comes to work. So if you're struggling yourself um, with managing or maintaining a sense of well-being, I think the key thing here really is to give yourself permission to take a step back because it's very easy to just keep going from one thing to the next to the next to the next. Um, but one of my favorite phrases is we're human beings, not human doings. <laughs> we're not created to just be doing, doing, doing all the time like robots. We're not made like machines. We do need time to reflect, to reassess and to replenish our energy levels. So, you know, give yourself that time to just, even if it's 10 minutes, to just take a step back from everything and allow the mind to quiet, um, quieten down and just take stock of what's going on for you right now and what your needs are and just to give yourself that time for self-reflection. Um, also, you know, tapping into activities and they can be micro breaks or micro things that you do or longer periods of time where you can that really bring you a sense of joy and happiness and help you to reduce feelings of stress. So for some people, it could be, you know, mindfulness practice or meditation and tapping into breathing, which can literally reduce your stress levels and calm your nervous system. For some, it's getting out in nature and going for a walk or it's playing with your pets or it's, you know, listening to uplifting music or um, taking some time to write, to journal and just have that as an outlet of expression. There's no right or wrong. And there's literally so many things that you could try. Those are just a small number of many things as examples. But what that does, it helps to lessen stress levels. So it puts you in more of a frame of mind where you can think a bit more logically and clearly and make more effective decisions rather than just coming from a place of fear and stress and overwhelm. We wanna try and remove from that place. So giving yourself the space to do so and taking time to reflect and also leaning on people if you need. It's not always about doing it just for yourself, but you know, as in feeling like you have to find the answers yourself. Sometimes, you know, um, someone offering their, you know, time as a sounding board can be really helpful too.